Hello there, YouTube. I am Necro Stevo, and it is my pleasure to bring you week one in the GBA, where the Victorian Shadows are actually going to be going up against the Kansas City Jirat Chiefs, coached by the Token Minorities Jolt. Uh, if you are not familiar with Jolt, his information will be in the description. Be sure to check him out. Fantastic battler, of course. I don't really need to say that because he's in the GBA, but like the amount of analytical approach that he puts into his battles very very tough matchup coming our way of course if you don't want to sit through the team builder there will be an annotation in the description to jump right into the battle so feel free to click that but let's take a look at the team up first we have our life orb diggersby this is actually going to be our lead for the majority of the time the only time i wouldn't lead with this is if he just brought all things that would beat Diggersby outright. It took a lot of, I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to bring this Choice Scarf, Choice Bandit, or Life Orbed, um, or I, and I even considered Swords Dance. But Diggersby's role here is going to be to punch as many holes as possible in his team. Um, and really Diggersby can hit everything. And Diggersby can also be a secondary win condition if it happens to Stay healthy until the end of the battle, and I can throw around some quick attacks. Um, if he happens to lead basically anything, but uh, I really wouldn't want to stay in against like a Specs Gardevoir or um, Durant or Star Raptor, but anything else I'm staying in, I'm clicking some type of attack against. Uh, Fire Punch is there just for Celesteela and to give me a secondary way to hit the Rotom. Um, oh, and I didn't say, actually, I forgot to annotate there, but Celesteela and Rotom Ghost Form are his Z users. So, based on the matchup, Celesteela is going to be what he's bringing as a Z user. And I really need to hit that thing as hard and as often as I can to stop it from setting up on me. Similarly to when um, Tom and the San Jose Sharpedos brought that against me last season, and that thing was a problem. So, Diggersby is a dedicated lead. And I can hit everything on his team with these moves. Uh, the speed is just there for Seismitoad out speed, a possible max speed. Seismitoad, I could see him bringing something like Rain Dance on Seismitoad just to counteract my weather. Uh, but that's the only reason he would bring max speed on Seismitoad. Up next, we have our primary win condition, which is the Lycan Rock. Definitely, his team really just doesn't take rock hits well. His main switch in to rockets would be something like a defensive Seismitoad or a fully defensive Mega Venusaur. I could also see a bulky Zygarde Dog coming in there. But uh, Lycan Rock forces out so many of his teammates, such as um, I can force out the Arcanine, I can force out the Gardevoir, the Persian to a lesser extent. I can definitely force out Star Raptor, and Durant doesn't want to necessarily take that hit either because I'm naturally faster than all of them. So the idea is to force something like that out, then set up a Swords Dance, and kind of sweep from there. A plus two Splinter Storm Shards can basically one-hit KO his entire team. Uh, and also with plus two, I can rip some serious holes in his team. So if the Sandstorm is up, that can be kind of a good game from there, depending on what he brings to counteract that. There is a good chance that he'll bring the Mega Venusaur and the Seismitoad. So um, those two need to be weakened or removed before I try to do anything with Lycanroc. Although if I have an opportunity to click um, Z Stone Edge on the Mega Venusaur, I will take it just because I can take it down in one hit. But uh, but yeah, I, I really look forward to using Lycanroc in this matchup because this is exactly the type of matchup that he's going to shine in. Um, on the off chance something like Celesteela or Scarf Latios gets out of hand, that is where having a Celerock and Quick Attack can help out, so those are nice to have in the back. Tyranitar was a little bit difficult to figure out what to put on there. I did continue with the idea that, oh, he doesn't have a lot of good switch-ins to Rock-type moves. So we have our Stealth Rocks here and Stone Edge. I ended up just going max Adamant Attack and Speed on Tyranitar to tie with Celesteela. Um, because there's a chance he will not bring max speed I don't know it just it sets up on a few of my members but Celesteela has severe form move slot syndrome against my team 
where he can have something to hit Rotom, for example, like Rock Slide, but then he'll be missing out on coverage for other things. And he really has to choose to go all physical or all special. And that's why I kind of have my wall set up the way I do. Now, if he has max speed, um, like Timid or Jolly, he will also be my Tyranitar. But at the very least, Tyranitar will speed tie with Celesteela. And that will also allow to outspeed something like a bulky um, Seismitoad, too. That's not really investing in speed at all. Um, and with Crunch and Pursuit, that allows me to trap the Latios. I'm really not sure if he'll bring Latios, just because I have several ways to reliably deal with it. Because I not only have Tyranitar, but something like my own um, Lycanroc in the in the um, sand would be able to outspeed it. Uh, and then on top of that, you'd also have to deal with something like Delmize being able to take a hit and then one hit KOing it back. Or uh, Araquanid also being able to take a hit and one hit KOing it back. So he might not bring the Latios, which would be really nice. But if he does, um, I can see him bringing us a little bit of an inventive set, maybe something with Surf on there, a Calm Mind Surf set. Uh, if he tries to bring Hidden Power Fighting on there, that's what Chopal Berry is for. Chopal also helps out with Star Raptor and Arcanine carrying possible close combat options to where I could take that hit and then one hit K of them back. Um, and I wouldn't even be forced to go for Stone Edge back because after the defense drop, Crunch would be enough to KO them. Up next, we have our Rotom Heat with just enough speed there to outspeed uh, a max speed Gardevoir. And um, I went with a lot of HP here to make it a better switch into the likes of Celesteela, Arcanine, Mega Venusaur, his own Rotom, Gardevoir, and to a lesser extent, the Durant, depending on if the Durant is choice locked or something like that, uh, especially locked into a bug type move specifically or a steel type move. Gotta keep it away from those rock type moves and the fighting type moves. But um, Hidden Power Grass is just there because I need um, a secondary, I, I, I have to at least hit that four times weakness on the Seismitoad. So Hidden Power Grass works really well there. I was a pain to breed, but at least now I have that option for the rest of the season. I already had Hidden Power Ice. Hidden Power Grass though. Um, and I will have opportunities to pain split up against the likes of Gardevoir and maybe a defensive Arcanine or Mega Venusaur. So that way they can't wear me down because all those Pokemon have access to their own reliable recovery as well. So if they're going to be recovering, they will be allowing my Rotom to recover too. Uh, Volt Switch is just there because I get to click that against a lot of his teammates and the things I, I have to be careful about the Zygarde form coming in on this. But other than I don't think Zygarde is going to want to switch in because he has to worry about being burned. So I think I'll be able to click Volt Switch with impunity against his team. Uh, up next, we have Fortress, which is going to be my main switch in to the likes of a uh, physically def offensive Celesteela. If I figure out that it doesn't have Flamethrower, Fortress should wall it. Fortress almost always walls Durant. Um, and if Star Raptor is banded, it can 2 hit KO Fortress, but then it's going to take a ton of damage in uh, return. And that investment there, I went sassy with 36 Spidef, just so with an Aqua Berry, I can always live a Spex Latios. Um, hidden Power Fire. I don't think I'll see that, but I figure if I can hit that benchmark, that's his most powerful special attacker. So with that benchmark, I can at least retaliate against a few things. Um, entry Hazards are really, really solid against his team. So one layer of spikes or even one Stealth Rock, he's going to be pressured to get rid of it, and his only ways to remove are Defog on the Latios or the Rotom or the Star Raptor. Um, and those Pokemon generally want to do other things besides Defog. So if I can even get up one spike, Fortress will make things very, very easy for my Lycanroc to sweep later on. Uh, Gyro Ball is just there in case I need to take a hit from something and then hit it back really hard. Um, and his only way of getting up entry hazards really is a Seismitoad. So I have Rapid Spin there just because I don't want my Rotom to be annoyed by them. But I don't see those him getting a good opportunity to set those up if I play offensive enough. And then in the last slot, Mega Alakazam is kind of a catch-all for a few weird things that he might bring. Um, number one, being able to trace Beast Boost from the Celesteela can make Alakazam a win condition in itself. Um, also being able to switch in on Arcanine after it takes out something and trace the Intimidate, or if I find out that it has Flash Fire, 
trace the flash fire, then I'll have that immunity to that, which can be really, really powerful here. Uh, this is my secondary grass move for the Seismitoad, should something happen with my own Rotom. Uh, I also get to have Focus Blast for the likes of Persian, to a lesser extent Durant, like just that I don't like clicking Focus Blast if I can avoid it, because that's not what I like to do. But if you gotta click it, you gotta click it, and you have to do it with confidence. So that's what we're here to do. And that is going to be the team. Um, also, if he randomly has a Swift Swim Seismitoad, I can bring in Alakazam and trace that Swift Swim and outspeed him too. So that's a nice little thing to have in the back there. Um, but yeah, that's the team. Thank you all for watching, and let's get right into the battle. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching the team builder. If you did not, a brief overview of the team is that we have a life orb, four attacks, Diggersby, uh, mostly physically defensive fortress, Choppleberry Tyranitar with rocks, uh, sub swords dance lichen rock, um, four attacks, Alakazam, and then the more bulky overall Rotom uh, with hidden power grass. Uh, you can see Jolt's team there on the side. He actually brought. I didn't expect to see Star Raptor, given that I have lichen rock. And I really didn't expect to see Zygarde just because I had so many things that could check it um, offensively and defensively. So there was a combination of things I expected to see. Going into this, I knew I had to keep the Celesteela off of the field. And so we are going to start out with Diggersby, like my original plan was to do so. He starts off with Seismitone and expecting him to just get up his rocks. I just went straight for return. Uh, I just wanted as much damage on it as possible, that way I could take it out later if I needed to, but he goes right for Scald, and I knew I could take that easily, but he gets the first turn burn, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this now, we actually ended up replaying this battle, um, because we disconnected, and so this is the replay of the disconnect, but initially he got the first turn burn, and so that's why I just left my Diggersby in there to go for a return, because there was nothing that... I, if he hadn't gotten the burn, then that would have gone very differently. Uh, I probably would have switched out there. But since he got the burn initially, I just ended up staying in against the Rotom, because I wanted to see what the Rotom had, if it was Scarf, or that type of thing. Um, I didn't know if it was Scarfed or not, and so I went out to Tyranitar because I knew he would expect me to have a Lumberry. And I figured I could scare him out, but he just stays in and Will-O-Wisp. So that turns out to be a poor play on my part. I definitely thought he would switch out and have a uh, Colberberry and switch out, but he has a Colberberry and he just stays in. But Tyranitar is so often run with Lumberry, I thought for sure he would expect that. Uh, so that's fine, I guess. Now I have a burn Tyranitar and I lost Diggersby basically on turn one. So this battle is not going at all the way I expected it to go. Uh, he does go out directly into his Zygarde right here. As I just set up my Stealth Rocks because at now, since I've played so poorly in the early game, I really need to get some entry hazards on the field, and I really need to uh, just make sure that his things are getting worn down as they switch in and out here. Now, expecting him to be Bandit or Life Orb, I immediately switch out to my Fortress just to see what he is locked into, or if he has Life Orb, or if he has Substitute or Swords Dance. Um, Fortress takes this really well, and that means he's not Bandit, and he's Life Orb, hey. So, expecting him to swap out here because after another Life Orb hit from a Gyro Ball minus speed, I have a chance to, to, unless he has HP investment, that can really put a lot of damage on him. But he just stays in and goes for another 1,000 arrows here, as I definitely expected him to switch out into Seismitude. And so basically I just sacrificed my Alakazam for no reason. Uh, that was either a really good call on his part or just a lot of balls and staying in, because Gyro Ball would have done 60 to 70% easily. Uh, he does switch out into Seismitude now, which... I, I definitely thought he was going to do that a turn earlier. Um, that Even if I had just put up a layer of spikes, that would have been more useful than the way that that turned out. That was not okay. Especially given that since he was life orbed, um, there was a chance that the uh, extreme speed didn't even knock out my Mega Alakazam. So, that all went terribly. And that is not the start to the season I really like to see. Expecting him to go for Stealth Rock now, I go out into Rotom so I can threaten him with Hidden Power Grass. And I figured, okay, he'll probably swap back out here, but he didn't do it last time, so I'm just going to go straight for the Hidden Power Grass, because now I, I feel like I've lost my beat on him in this matchup. Um, and yeah, that that just that series of plays in the beginning, 
I really didn't understand why he stayed in. It has worked out really, really well. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing his commentary on that because I, I think he just had a beat on me that I wasn't expecting is the main thing there. Um, but anyways, all that aside, I do go out in the fortress now just to take this thousand, zero, thousand arrows and initially he, I think he didn't get a critical hit initially, but it didn't end up mattering too much here. I, he would have had an extra life warp hit or something like that. Um, so now I go out into Tyranitar just to set up the sand and this is a critical point in the battle because I didn't get a chance to get up that extra layer of spikes that I wanted. Um, I did manage to whittle down the Seismitoad, which was really, really good. Uh, but since I didn't get a chance to whittle down anything else, that's going to make it hard for Lycanroc to sweep. I'm basically down to just Lycanroc and Rotom at this point because I threw away my Alakazam and my Tyranitar. So now we have to, to just assume, okay, I think he's going to switch here, and so I'm going to go for the substitute on his switch. And he does end up swapping out into Rotom, which is really good. I was doing calcs to see if there was any way I could take out Rotom after with a plus two with just a Cell Rock, so I don't have to use Stone Edge. But I wasn't sure if he had HP investment. The only damage I've done to him was with Tyranitar, and that was through the Colber Berry. And based on that damage, it looked like he had, it looked like he had HP investment. And so I did not want to risk not KOing him um, because then I have to use another substitute and yeah that would be a whole ordeal uh, another play I could have gone for is go for another swords dance with the sand up I had a chance to live the thunderbolt but then he could of course go out into his um, Zygarde and pick me off with a life orb extreme speed so I kind of was forced to just go right for stone edge there and right here, as soon as Garvar came in and traced my Sand Rush, I was like, okay, this is not terrible. I can possibly live the Moon Blast, depending on how he's invested here. Because he's probably Scar Sand Rush, is what I was thinking. And I almost went for a Solar Rock, and I almost went for Swords Dance, not really knowing what he would do. But I just went for Stone Edge, because that seemed to be the safest play. And that was a misplay. If I had gone for a Solar Rock, I would have had a chance to KO it. If I had gone for the Swords Dance then I could have definitely KO'd this Seismitoad. Now we have to go off of a roll from my Splintered Storm Shards attack. Um, Splintered Storm Shards does have a chance to KO him depending on his own investment. And the best thing about Splintered Storm Shards is that it's just such a powerful move. x death is here. The force of the move Welcome takes you to the void. Only then we embrace your own the despair of as eternity. all these rocks rain you down and wreak havoc and destruction pain upon the very foes that come to defeat shadows and your own loss. <laughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't die. He lives with a sliver of health, and that means if I had gotten up that one layer of spike earlier. He would have gotten KO'd by that powerful move. That's okay. That is okay. We know for the future. We definitely know for the future. Um, and of course, he may have invested differently in his Seismitoad to make sure that he lived it. I'm not sure. We do get the revenge of me taking the time to breathe this hidden power grass and taking out the Seismitoad. Uh, this battle did not go the way I saw it playing out at all. Uh, and if I had called that switch into Seismitoad more properly, not only would there have been critical damage on the Zygarde, but I would have had my Mega Alakazam around for the end of the battle. Um, granted, he would have had Scarf Star Raptor and Scarf Gardevoir to contend with, but with my Lycanroc, I think that those two things were very easily dealt with. So it was really just a matter of how I played poorly with Tyranitar and Alakazam. Um, and I don't even know if that was playing poorly with Alakazam, because I definitely would have swapped out if I were him um, against the against the Fortress. But that is okay. I still enjoyed this match. I really got to see the power of Lycanroc. Um, it'll be fun to see his investments and his uh, the way that he kind of planned for this match. And guys, be sure to go check out his channel, because we all want to know why he decided to stay in there and continue going for Thousand Arrows. And if you guys think that I played that poorly, please let me know. I've had some very thoughtful conversations with you all in the comment section in the past. I look forward to doing that this season as well. So we're going to end this first battle of the GBA Season 8 with an 0-3 loss. And we're going to look forward to more victories in the future. Alright guys, thank you so much for your time. 
and I'll see you next time.